Greetings, everybody. How are we doing today? Welcome to Macro Talk 2. That's where you are. I hope you're interested in macro photography, because otherwise this is going to be a very confusing, boring hour for you. Uh, before we get started, and I see that uh, there are already uh, several of you out there, and we have some questions, which is the whole point of this. Um, I have added this not just as a convenience for, for my European viewers, for whom 4 o'clock in the morning apparently is inconvenient uh, where, when my regular macro talk is going on. I thought this was also a wonderful opportunity to just take a couple of minutes and explain to you how my channel is being reorganized and the way I do things is changing. Uh, it's doing so uh, in, in reaction to, um, uh, get, I guess, the times and uh, what I've done already and where I want the channel to go and what I want it to do. But first of all, let me make sure can everybody hear and see me okay? Just if somebody would give me a uh, thumbs up while I say hi to uh, Ploddles, Eric, Patrick, Walter, Graham. And uh, good, loud and clear from Graham. That's excellent, excellent. And uh, Robert from Scotland. What part of uh, uh, Scotland are you in, Rob? Um, that's, my, uh, that's my second home, I guess. It's where I, when I go home, that's where I go to. Ingolf. Glad you made it, sir. These are all very familiar people because I've just been recording a video about all of your exploits, Graham and Ingolf. Um, I'll explain that later on. Eric, good evening in France. And um, Nils from Norway. Kees from the Netherlands. Kees, how are you doing, my friends? And I said, I said it wrong again. What, tell me again how to pronounce it. I, I was calling you Keys and then keys and you said it was something else. Tell me and I'll get it right. I promise. And uh, Peebles, yeah, I know Peebles um, in the borders, right, or or near the borders. All right, Ralph from London, welcome. And uh, Toppy. Okay, not sure what that means. That's not how you pronounce K E E S. I don't think. Anyway, anyway, let me tell you what I was going to tell you first. What is the live stream, uh, at least in the context of my channel? What is it? What has it been and where am I going with it? Okay. It has been uh, just a fairly informal Q&A gathering that takes place on, on Tuesdays in the United States. It's at 8 o'clock in the evening, which is a, apparently a good time for everybody. We get a good, a good crowd, 50, 70 people or more. And... Uh, we do a lot of socializing and chatting back and forth, and then uh, as much as possible, I answer the questions as they come in. Now, that has been kind of a placeholder. We've had about 25 of those, and they are just now starting to um, uh, materialize into something more useful. This move towards more live engagement with the audience is because I believe it's more help, it will be more helpful to you than me just pumping out more videos. But I still plan to pump out more videos. This is what's going to happen. In the coming uh, weeks, I'm going to transition over to releasing one or two videos uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the month, or some, at some point in the month. And as the videos come out, they'll, they'll cover uh, a, a topic, uh, maybe loosely, maybe it'll be a series on a very specific topic, but we'll cover a topic. Let's say uh, 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 transitioning to microscope objectives. That's right off the top of my head. Then the subsequent uh, macro talk and macro talk two will be two opportunities to discuss the concepts that I brought up in the videos. Maybe you have questions about whether or not this objective is any good, or you're having trouble setting up that objective, or what adapters do I need for that objective? 
and so on and so on and so on. But we'll take our, our lead from the last video. So the videos and the, the live streams will be there to complement one another. But that doesn't mean there isn't plenty of time for us to chit chat about whatever you want. Anything that comes up that is uh, of interest to you and, and whether or not it's related to that, you can bring it up. Now, how does that compare to, uh, to, to Macro Talk 1 or the other Macro Talk? They will not be duplicates of one another. I will not repeat what I did at Macro Talk at Macro Talk 2. Tuesdays and Thursdays are two separate uh, opportunities for us to get into whatever the topic is. And I could foresee a future in which we cover uh, some of the material fairly uh, superficially on Tuesdays and then dig a bit deeper on, on Thursdays. Who knows where it'll go? Depends on how much overlap in the audience. It's also a fantastic place for me to interact with you to get feedback on how this is working for you. Is this helpful for you or is this a waste of time? Do you want to see something different? So it'll give me a chance to constantly stay in touch in a very realistic way. How does this tie into things like interviews, which I have really come to love? I, I really enjoy talking to uh, established photographers from other parts of the world who are doing different things and learning from them. That would be what I would consider a feature. That would be something I would do separate from the main uh, flow of what the channel is doing. So we'd still do interviews. I may only do four a year, uh, but they would be very carefully selected. Uh, I have some, uh, some hopes that we're going to be able to get on a couple of really, really big names uh, in the coming year uh, that you will be really thrilled to, to, to uh, see interviewed. Uh, so that will be something extra, as will other, other things that I've done from time to time that wouldn't fit into this. A product review would be an example. I may do a short product review video that would be standalone and we wouldn't need to discuss it unless you had questions about it. Uh, it would also be uh, an opportunity for me to conduct uh, polls uh, if there's anything that, that I'm trying to, to figure out the best, the best way to move on. This would be a great way for me to get 50 uh, uh, clear directions from you guys. So how does the live stream compare or, or how does it interact with the event that we do every other Saturday? Some of you may not be aware of this, but uh, I have a, a Patreon group that supports my work uh, that uh, for a, a, a fairly nominal monthly uh, payment of, I think, $10, though that might be going up a little bit. Um, this, this group of people chip in that money every month to defray some of the expenses of the channel. And in exchange for that, uh, they get their videos early and ad free and probably most importantly, they get my undivided attention every other Saturday for two hours. I do it eight o'clock in the morning is this coming Saturday, uh, so that the time's more favorable to uh, my Australian friends and to Europe. And then the following, uh, well, two Saturdays uh, in the future from that, it will be two o'clock in the afternoon, my time. So it would be more convenient for my US viewers. But everybody can come to every one of those if you're a Patreon supporter. Those events are like 10 of us sitting around in a, in a, in a comfortable room talking. And it is the, the kind of format that, that is very organic. It is as much for, for answering questions as it is for just sharing opinions. I do as much asking as answering in those sessions. It's very much a personal interaction. And it is almost the only personal interaction that my schedule allows for anymore. I don't have time to, to engage with, um, with email like I used to. I can't even answer my email, to be honest. I have 12,000 of them that I haven't even been able to get to. 
so that is the, uh, an opportunity for people who just want to to pick my brains on something or um, uh, you know share their ideas. A good example of this is one of our, our really groundbreaking macro photographers in this community is Graham uh, Carey, who's here in the, the meeting today, who's doing some just amazing things uh, that are entirely novel uh, uh, to, to my experience in macro photography, using some equipment that he has invented, this kind of changing the way the, that we think about vibrations and, and stepping platforms and so on. And that is where we talk about it. Uh, he brings his report and shows us what's going on, demonstrates the equipment, and we, we discuss it. And it's incredibly useful and uh, enriching for everybody who's there. So that is what, what the, the um, uh, Patreon... I call, this one's called the Patreon Picnic because I can't think of a name for the damn thing. But, but each time it's, it's that kind of nucleus of supporters who, who want more in-depth, more focused discussion. Right, so what is Discord? Because you've heard about Discord. I have been incredibly fortunate to have several people who have stepped up over at Discord. These are, these are my viewers. These aren't people that, that I hired or went out to find. They found me and they are helping me reimagine and rework the way Discord is. And it is a place that, that you can go to interact with one another, which is the piece that would otherwise be missing from this, is it builds a community where you can go uh, as, say, a relatively new macro photographer and you can find a Graham Carey over there and you can ask him, about what you're having problems with. And generally, the way this works is you have your discussions back and forth, and every once in a while it gets, it gets kicked over to me to address a, a specific concern. But I'm there. I mean, I'm part of that community, and I engage and I get messages over there. Uh, so it, it is a, it, it's a, a support role that it plays. But it does something else as well. And a key element in this, in this uh, whole, if you, think of the, if you think of the whole thing as a wall, not a good analogy, uh, walls separate things, but if you think of it like a wall, my videos are the bricks. They are going to be content rich, researched chunks of, of, uh, of, of uh, knowledge that I share with you. This, the live stream, is going to be the mortar that kind of holds the bricks together and fills in all the gaps. Uh, I have no idea what, what Patreon is in that, um, uh, because I hadn't thought that analogy through that far. But Discord, also, I have no idea how that fits in the analogy, but Discord just makes the whole thing work together. And one of the, one of the, the uh, uh, elements that I think is so critical for, for you as learners, me as a teacher, is this competition that started out as a, a, a whim, to be honest. I just thought, well, it would be nice if people could share their pictures. And I have learned that this is much, much too good an opportunity to help people really improve their photography at a meteoric rate because there is nothing like sharing a picture publicly uh, to, to get you to focus on what you're doing. And uh, I love it. I think it's, it's as enjoyable as this is. This is the, one of the things I really love about this job is, is this kind of engagement, but the competition is another thing. And we're getting more and more entries that are more and more um, uh, interesting and uh, uh, showing deeper levels of talent and creativity than I would have ever, ever believed possible out of a, a random group of, of people that I didn't know. I'm seeing, I'm seeing work that, that is better than the, the work that I pay money to see in magazines. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity and the, the folks over at Discord have streamlined that process to where 
it's much less of a burden on me. From now on, for example, when you get ready to submit a photograph to the competition, all you have to do is go to www.macrocontest.com. Macro contest. It's all in the name. You'll remember that. And when you get over there, Curly Toes, who you may or may not be familiar with, Carlos, uh, Curly Toes has trained some robots, personal robots of his own. Or they might belong to Discord, I don't know. But they, they're over there, they live in the building, and they will take your photographs from you. They will also check to make sure that your name is on them, unlike the five images that were disqualified from this month's competition because they didn't have a name on them. The robots would have ray-gunned you to death on the spot. So you just can't take risks with that. Uh, so uh, that's the way it's going to be from now on. You drop your two pictures over there, drop off three, see what the robots do. I wouldn't encourage you to do that because they're not humorous. They're not even like Hal 9000, who was nice most of the time and then really not nice at the end. Or the one in uh, Danger Will Robinson. That robot was a friendly robot. Carlos's robots, they have no sense of humor at all. So there'll be no more disqualifications because of that. And uh, then at the end of the month, I get the, one of the robots, I won't let him in the house. You never let them in your house and never get your hand near the mouth hole part of their head. They will hand me the photographs with the titles and names on it, and I can do the video right there and then. I don't have to go find them. Okay, so that's another major improvement, and all of these things get, free me up to do stuff like this. I am going to stop with that because I think I've I, I, have I answered any thoughts you had about what's going on with the channel. That's the way we're going forward. I'm incredibly excited about it. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be what. You know, I've been doing this for four years. I, I haven't made a penny doing it. I've spent everything I've ever earned and saved doing it. But I love it as much today as I did the first day I did it. What I am doing now with this reorganization feels to me like what is going to change the, the, the course of, of, of history for the channel as far as I'm concerned. So I hope you're as excited about it as I am. There were some questions that this all began with. So I'm going to go back to the top. If I don't get to a question, if I don't get to a question, I will answer it in one or two ways in the comments or in the, the show description. This becomes a video, by the way. They all become videos. And uh, this, I'll edit the, <coughs> the uh, show description at the end and then post it on my YouTube channel under live. So you just go there, you can uh, listen to any that you missed. And the show description will have any questions I didn't get to answer, or if they're really good questions that deserve a discussion, they'll be in the, the next uh, Macro Talk or Macro Talk 2. And you, they're both recorded, so you can see them if you miss them. Let me get to these questions, and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Do you ever keep all the individual shots or slabs from a stack or just the final result after you have done the retouching in Xerine? I have had to develop a workflow that basically prohibits me from going back. Now, that being said, every once in a while, there will be a photograph that I believe in my heart is a good photograph somewhere in there but I didn't get to it the first time around. And if I feel that really strongly, I may keep the original inputs and I may keep the slabs. But 99 times out of 100, after I finish retouching, I save the image, I close Xerine, I go to Lightroom, I import the, the uh, slabs and the image, the final retouched image into Lightroom, and then I erase all of the, the primary inputs and the slabs, leaving only one image, and that is the retouched DMAP usually. That then I uh, finish up in, in uh, whatever other editors I'm using, usually Photoshop, plus or minus um, uh, Topaz, and then the photograph is finished and ready to do whatever I'm going to do with it. So that's my normal mode. 
I was working on some photographs uh, with uh, Rick Littlefield, stuff that we were uh, shared a common interest in, and, and I had several of those images that I knew there was a better picture in there, and I saved all of those gigabytes of, of pictures. But as soon as Rick and I finished dealing with them last night, uh, I threw away the originals. So that's the way I do it. I cannot do it any other way. I have eight eight terabyte drives on my desk and they're all full so that's why i throw them away okay um question which setup gives the best result with a mitu toyo m plan 5x and 10x a Raynox reversed or normal uh, neither in in my world the the best results i get is with uh, an itl 200 the thor labs um uh, relay lens at a very unusual distance of 245 millimeters in reverse. But of the, if the question you're asking is, I have to use the Raynox, then it's definitely reversed. Uh, if you use the Raynox not reversed at about 200 millimeters, um, you, you're going to see some, some softening, some, it's very minimal softening uh, at the edges. If you flip it around, the edges are sharp uh, to, to the center, and the tiny bit of softening that you would expect to see at the center is not there. So uh, yeah, I use it in reverse, and I use it at 208 millimeters, because that's, that is where my copy of the lens focuses at infinity, which is what you need to do for any relay lens. Remember that like most of the lenses we use, it's not a simple lens, it's a, it's a complex and asymmetric lens. It performs differently backwards, so the, the amount of extension it requires is different. And the best rule of thumb is just measure it. Just put it on a camera, put it on your bellows, take it outside and use the bellows extension to find out where it focuses on a tree in the far distance. As soon as you have that, look at the numbers, write them down. That lens will always focus on infinity there. The ITL 200 in reverse focuses at 245 millimeters for me. So that's where I use it. Okay, does that answer that? I hope so. Patrick, I can't get Xerine in Lightroom, or is that not possible? Helicon has no problem. Okay, Xerine and... Uh, the Adobe products do in fact work together, but it is, uh, you have to go to Xerine to access the, the interface. In other words, you bring up Xerine on your computer and when you click on the, the tab uh, for um, Lightroom, it opens up the, uh, the, the interface with the stack shot and, and you, you operate it from there. Now, you can live stream uh, through Lightroom just using the, the native software. Uh, but if you're, talking about, uh, if you're talking about actually setting up your stacks, then yes, most certainly you can do that using uh, the, the stack shot and uh, Xerine. You cannot do it with Xerine and WeMacro, for example. There, there is no interface for that. Um, I talked about this in a previous video or a previous live stream. I can't remember where, but I, I broke this all down. There are a lot of different reasons why people like to do that, uh, to tether with the stacking program as the controller. I'm not one of them. Um, I, ju I don't have a computer spare to do it. So uh, we, we can get into that in more detail later on. Maybe there's a video in there somewhere. Walter asks, do I have any experience with mosaic software that can be used to cre uh, create mosaics from several extreme macro composite images? Yeah, I did it one time and it looked like a photograph. You know, you take these t teeny tiny photographs uh, of high resolution pictures of bugs and you make them into a, 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 a mosaic that paints a picture of something else. Mine, however, all looked like a big puddle of dog's vomit. If a, if a dog had chewed up and eaten three Barbie dolls and then threw them up, that's what all my pictures look like. So I stopped using it. So 
Even if I could remember the name of the program that I used to do that, Walter, you probably would want to try another one. So if I remember it, I'll write it down in the, in the uh, chat. Okay, Graham, loud and clear. Okay, good, so I am being heard. It would, this would be a bad time to find out that nobody had heard a word of what I'd said, and would I repeat it? Because no, I, I, I wouldn't. I'd just go, I'd just leave. Uh, let me see, Ingolf. Good to see you on the screen in the new year, alive and well. I hope there was never much doubt about that, uh, Ingolf. Um, did anybody get to watch that that crazy um, uh, live stream with, with framing the picture? Um, oh, I meant to bring that picture in to show it to you because some of you may not have seen it. I did a live stream on Christmas, Christmas Eve, I think, uh, of, of framing a, a, a print that I made. And it was a great fun uh, uh, live stream. I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. But several people have asked me two things. Would I do a... Um, uh, a, a video of a, a condensed video of just how to do the framing the way I did it because I do some things that I think our, our professional framers wouldn't do but the results are nice and um, the second thing that uh, I've been asked now four times is can I buy that that framed print and uh, the answer would be yes if there was a way for me to get if you lived in my neighborhood not today, because I don't have a car uh, anymore. It's, it's in the hospital get it, having major surgery. It has been for three days. But if I had a car, I'd drive it to you. But most of you, don't, you know, aren't in driving distance. You're on the other side of an ocean. But yeah, so one of these days I might sell that picture. It was one I was real proud of. I took the best weevil photograph I've ever taken. And I can say that because, I mean, I look at all my pictures. Do you want to see it? Well, I'll get to that in just a second. I, I, I love this picture, but I'll show it to you in a minute. Let me answer some more questions or I'm going to get behind. Um, anyway, so this is a good time for Europeans is what I figured. And uh, yes, uh, uh, Ingolf agrees with me. It's what, eight, nine o'clock over there? Um, nine o'clock in the uh, east? Yeah, that's not too bad. I would stay up for that. I mean, not if I was doing it, but if somebody interesting was doing it, I would. What part of France, Eric? I absolutely love certain parts of France. I like the, the, the south, not all the way to the coast, though. Lovely country. Never been to Norway, but that's awfully close to Sweden, and Sweden's where they have that rotten fish food, and I just don't think I could deal with that. I read an article on it. Uh, have you ever heard of Nile Red, the, the young man that does dangerous chemistry experiments in his lab? Anyway, um, yeah, he, he, he was talking about that, or somebody in his comments was, was talking about that being the foulest smelling edible thing uh, in the world. And uh, I, would, uh, I would disagree, because I, I would not consider that an edible thing. It's fish that's um, rotted, really rotted. They eat it um, in Norway, in Sweden. Anyway, so uh, Nils, just don't go to Sweden, you'll be okay. And let me see. I know there was another question down. You know, the, the way you get my attention on this thing, uh, there are several ways. If you hit the, uh, the, I think it's the at, the at button, you know, above the number two, shift two gives you an at. And then if you put my name, it comes up on my screen in orange and you have a question that comes up there like that in orange, I will go straight to it and I'll answer it. That's what I do on Tuesdays and it's been working fairly well. Gary, we have actually, you have, have several fellow viewers uh, in Vancouver. Um, Steve is a Valkuvian. If that's, uh, that's probably not a thing, is it? Valkuvian? Yeah, well, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's up there, and uh, there are several others. Can't think of the names right now, but uh, Angie, Newcastle. Wow, you're, you're my only viewer in Newcastle. That's, uh, that's great. I, I quite like your town. I didn't like it when I was growing up, but I think it's been fixed up quite a bit. All right, Ploddles. South End on Sea. My sister-in-law was from South End on Sea. That's a rough place, isn't it, really? Joseph, you made it. Glad you made it. From Detroit. 
still sunny and Ron made it too. This is wonderful. It is a lot of folks from, um, it's probably half of, uh, half the folks here are, um, uh, my regulars on Tuesday as well. That's one. You'll get really bored with this if you have to do this twice a week though, chaps, I, I have a feeling. And, uh, yeah, from, uh, Hem Brodian, uh, from, uh, Middlesbrough in the UK. Welcome. Jimbo. Jimbo was the winner of the photo competition last month. And I can proudly say you're not the winner this month, Jimbo. <laughs> you, uh, you came close. Uh, I've got a new thing I do in the photo competition that involves a homemade bell. It's so that I could keep talking and not stop to say that somebody had made it to the finals. I just ring the bell. And uh, Jimbo, you will probably hear that bell if you uh, watch the video this afternoon when it comes out. Not guaranteeing it, but you probably will. All right, where was I? Um, Jimbo's in Camborne in Cornwall. I spent a summer holiday down there. At least I think I did. Um, there was a lot of scrumpy involved, and I was 18. So I might have been in Wales, for all I know. Uh, John, welcome from Northern Ireland. It's great to see all my European friends here. Lance. Oh, Lance. Um, I, I'm going to use this opportunity to give you a message. Lance, your... your um, your entries to, to the photo competition were fantastic. Both of them were fantastic. And one of them might have done really well, but they were both disqualified because you didn't put your name on it. I didn't find out who you were until later. Was that embarrassing me telling you that in front of all these people? Well, I'm going to say it again in the video this afternoon. You've got to put your name on it. In the past, the risk was you'd be embarrassed. In the future, of course, it's ray guns and robots that will be taking over for me. So, uh, yeah, there you go. All right, Lee. Um, oh, your first time on, Lee. I, I probably should be on my best behavior then. Uh, everybody else I recognize. You're from Wales, okay? I just made a joke about Wales. So this may be Lee's last go around. Um, I, I spent the summer in Blynau Festiniog the following year, and I do remember that. Uh, now, uh, you're asking a question. Oh, you're, you're asking a question about how to get on Discord. Okay, brilliant. All right, that's a good question to answer. We were talking about Discord at the beginning, but I didn't tell you how to get on there. Every video that I make where I remember, which is most of the time, I post a, uh, an invitation in the program description or in the, they call it the video description, somewhere towards the bottom in my how to find me uh, section, you'll see a Discord link. But what I'm gonna do right now, because I am uh, capable of uh, multitasking, I, I said uh, tongue in cheek because I'm really not, I'm going to get an invitation and I'm gonna post it in the um, comments in the chat here right now so you can get ready to copy it. Um, just uh, give me two seconds to do this. All right, so I'm going to just... Uh, the easiest way for me to find the invitation is actually to... Well, I could just go to Discord, couldn't I? It, maybe you'd, I, I could show you how you do this. No, then you'd be able to get your own invitations. That wouldn't be right. Okay, here it comes. Um, I'm only just learning it myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an invitation that is good forever and for as many times as you want to use it. So if somebody else says in your earshot, how do you get on that Discord thing? Just give them a copy of your invitation. It'll work for, for other people too. Um, a, a lot of times people use invitations that, that run out after a number of days or something. So that's what I'm doing here is making a brand new invitation that has no limit on how long it lasts or how many people can use it. Then I generate it, copy it, and now I'm going to post it into your chat down here at the bottom. Oh dear, here it is, done. So go to the bottom of the, the um, chat thing there 
and you have an invitation to uh, Discord. Click on that, go over there and say hi to everybody. Um, the, the people over there are a lot of the same people who are here. And we have a mixture of people who have uh, never done any macro photography. They just want to do it and uh, are learning about it. And then there are people who've been doing it their entire lives and they are superb macro photographers. You go over there and ask a question and I guarantee you people will step up to answer your question in as much detail as you need. And if ever they, they can't or, or well, for, for whatever reason they, you, you need some additional input, somebody will get in touch with me and, uh, and you will get your answers. I, I didn't like it at first because I couldn't keep track of the conversations. It was like they were all going on at, 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 at once and I couldn't tell who was talking to who. I still can't tell when people are talking to me. But the point is, it's something that you can learn, something that I can learn. And it, it is a great resource when I want to announce something to talk about the um, uh, up, upcoming live streams or whatever. So it's very good for that. Let me see, back to the, uh, back to the notes. And um, so that was, uh, that was Lee. Hopefully Lee, that got your uh, question answered. And uh, photographer85 wanted to say thank you for, uh, for doing the live thing for, for you guys. You are my audience. I, I mean, the only reason I didn't do it was I was under the uh, mistaken impression that, that uh, the European folks were over here anyway, that you just all got up early or something. But no, I, I wouldn't dream of cutting you out. Um, so yeah. And um, by the way, by the way, this is a bit self-serving, but if you look at the very bottom of your, of, of your chat area thing, there is a little rectangle with a dollar sign in it. That is if you became so motivated as to, as to think, well, you know what? I think I'd like to buy that man a, 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 a pint of Guinness. Ooh, that sounded rather good, didn't it? Uh, yeah, well, well, you could do it with that, with that button. You press that. I don't think it buys me a Guinness, but you can, uh, you, you see what happens when you press it. Uh, that's it. I'm not going to say any more about that. So uh, let me see. Where did I, I jumped ahead of myself. There's another question here. Ploddles. You often mention the DCR 150. I have the DCR 250. Can that be used instead to obtain obtain the same results, or are you better off getting the 150? They are two different lenses. The uh, I, I have them both. I generally don't use the 250. The the 250 has a a, a shorter focal length, and when you use it uh, in the same setup that you would use the 150 except that you use your your extension will be different it's a different lens so you'll you'll measure the the infinity um, focus point with your bellows or whatever you're using uh, helicoid when you get it set at infinity focus it's actually going to give you uh, uh, approximately one half of the magnification that you would get from the same objective if you were using it at 200. Objectives are designed to be used at a particular um, uh, focal length or with a, a tube lens of a particular focal length. Okay, that's the whole, the whole point of infinity objectives is that you can put the objective at, at the front of your microscope and you can have some space where nothing happens except the light passes through in a parallel flux. So it's a great place to put in uh, a, 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 a dichroic mirror or a, a, a beam splitter or something else. All kinds of equipment that the smart people put in there to improve the, the, the imaging of their microscope or to do something fancy with it. For us, it means that we, we have some room to play with. But what is, in, what is key is that the, the lens on the camera side of that infinity space, the relay lens, will then take those parallel rays and focus them onto your sensor, which is why the lens needs to be at the point where it focuses on infinity. Otherwise, it won't focus the light onto your sensor properly. Now, when you use the DCR250, it is going to focus the light halfway 
from where the 150 would not not exactly but but close to it so you would need to use a different setup and your 10x objective would suddenly become a very very sharp 5x objective so that's the only time I actually use the 250 except on the rare occasion I use it the way it was designed to be used which is putting it on the front of a lens to use it as a diopter that's the other way. So your 250 is not wasted. It's a great diopter. It's a lovely sharp lens. But if you're using it as a relay lens, you want to use it in reverse at approximately its focal length, but figure out what that is by putting it on the camera. Um, prizes. Prizes for the photo competition. Until such time as, as I can budget for uh, actually... Uh, purchasing uh, prizes to, to give away, which is ultimately what I want to do. I want to reinvest any money that's made from this into to getting more people involved in the competition. I put out a, um, a, a very uh, quiet uh, uh, plea uh, for anybody who had anything that they didn't need anymore or didn't want anymore that, that would make a good prize. And um, it didn't, we didn't really get a whole lot of reaction to that. I probably should have asked louder. But, but until just the other day, uh, when uh, Robert, friend of the show, supporter of the channel, great all-around chap, sent me some stuff that is going to become prizes um, as soon as I figure out how exactly to get to... Uh, to do things like uh, uh, ship them overseas, that type of thing. But I'm going to show you these because this this is just the kind of thing, this is the kind of thing that happens when you have an audience like I do, uh, of, of people who just get it. And uh, how would you like to, for example, come into an enlarger lens? Not any enlarger lens, uh, an EL Nikkor 50 millimeter f 2.8 that appears to me never to have been used. How would that be for a prize? Oh, possibly you'd prefer a set of bellows in a box with the original paperwork. This is a bellows um, focusing attachment for slide copying you may recognize. Just, this was just so, uh, uh, so generous and so thoughtful and uh, I, I cannot wait to, to see these go to, to a good home. So um, just, just saying, there, there are exciting things in the works. Robert probably thinks I should also show the power supply for, for a big stepper motor that, that he put in the box, but I'm not gonna show that because that that's going to probably stay right here. Okay, where was I? Uh, question. I may have missed one up above, but I'll answer this one first because it's from Angie. Angie, have we met before? Your, your name is not familiar. Um, stacks using flash. You use a Nikon Z6 or Z6. You get slight movement in your stacks with flash. You can't use the silent shutter, right? You can never use that with, with these mirrorless cameras. Um, when you say movement, are you talking about mirror slap vibration? I bet you are. Um, well, I'll tell you what, the way I got rid of it is to, uh, is to use mirror up. And you can actually, with, your, with the Z6, you can use... No, you can't, can you? you the, with the fully electronic shutter, you cannot use... Um, there is a way around this. Um, I, do, I don't shoot mirrorless. Uh, I have a mirrorless that just stays on my microscope. Uh, so I'm, I, some, this came up in a live stream about a month ago, and somebody said that there was a trick to it, that you could trick it into um, uh, firing your flashes without uh, having the... The, the shutter. Why are you getting vibration when the shutter actuates? You shouldn't. That that uh, that shutter doesn't uh, vibrate the camera at all. I wonder if you've got something else going on. Hmm. Let me think about that one, Angie. Um, 
Yeah, let me let me think about it, and I will if I can uh, f- remember and find my notes from from the tip I was given. If anybody here, uh, I mean, uh, there, there are several people here who are Nikon shooters who are using the Z cameras. If anybody knows how to address this question, I would be more concerned that the movement that you're seeing is something other than the shutter. That shutter does does not appear to be very mechanically disturbing to the uh, to the the camera well I, I'll tell you what um, Graham is out there Graham do you, are you familiar with uh, with this problem it might have been you I talked to anyway uh, uh, well I'll circle back around uh, to that one Angie I'm sorry I couldn't give you a proper answer after gluing insects to the needle and photographing them do I store preserve them do I remove the glue? Okay, this is a right up my alley uh, because I do this all day, every day. First thing is I use so little glue, there is nothing really to remove. When the pin falls off, which it will eventually, it takes the glue with it. I use, if you ever see me, I've done a couple of demonstrations of this with a microscope. I'll, I'll dip the pin in the glue and then I will, the glue will get sucked completely off the pin uh, by my blotting paper that, that bugs on and I go straight to the insect. So there are only molecules of glue left on there. Uh, and the answer is yes, I, I never throw away an insect that still has a photograph in it, ever. Uh, the rule of thumb is if, if I have stored it wet, I take it out to photograph it. Obviously, I clean it, dry it, photograph it. Then I store it wet again. I never keep them dry. If they've been stored in alcohol, they go back in alcohol. If they're dry and I'm able to clean it without wetting it, then I photograph it dry and save it dry. In which case, I put it in little plastic boxes that are not airtight. Uh, they they are actually more like matchboxes, and air can circulate. And I put a little scrap of paper in there to absorb any fluid, and they last for years that way. Um, the last thing is if I have a dry insect that I pin and photograph, but in the process I have to wet it, and I mean soak it in order to, to re, re, um, revitalize the eyes or clean dirt out of long hair on a bee something like that then in that case um, I keep it wet so if it goes from dry to wet and then stays wet for any period of time I'll keep it wet so that is the answer I have an orchid bee oh I was going to show you a picture I have an orchid bee that is my um, favorite insect I think of all time it's from uh, South America, and I got it from a, a bug house uh, when I was doing a video on, on uh, buying bugs. And um, I have photo- I had to cut this thing out of the bottle it came in because it was too big to come out of the bottle. And I thought, well, I'll never get a photograph out of this. I have photographed it more times now than any other bug ever that I've ever photographed. This one bee has been in it's so many pictures so yeah i keep them as long as as long as they are respectable i'll clean them until i start cleaning antennae off them or their legs fall off which will happen eventually uh, so while i'm i'm yakkering away here i'm going to just try to find that the the two pictures one of that bee and uh, one of my weevil that um it's, I, it's not typically that I would, would say, hey, look at this picture. This is the best picture I ever took. But uh, I am very, very particular about uh, pictures that, of mine that I like and, sh- and show. So it has to be one I really like to, to even think about showing it to you. But boy, I love this. I love this picture. You may have seen it if you're on Patreon because I, I put this in with a, um, with a caption. Uh, all right, here it is. I'm going to share that screen with you for just a second. Uh, so let me see if I can get it to go full screen. Yeah. There. 
that is just the prettiest weevil I have ever seen. And um, the, the, uh, it's one of those rarities where every, every scale on its body, every, every tuft of hair, every t uh, little piece of antenna was just perfect um, in the photograph didn't have to do anything to it anyway i don't know that was apropos of nothing oh it was the bee i was going to show you well um i might not have time to because i've got questions i've got to answer here but anyway whatever the reason i was showing you that there you go i showed it to you ah i think that I think that my stream may have just collapsed. All right, uh, can, can, um, can you guys hear me? I'm getting an error that YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain streaming. Let me look down at the bottom. Hmm. Gosh, uh, guys, I don't know if you're even hearing me. Uh, I'm getting a, a, a message. You can probably actually see the message uh, on, the, uh, uh, on, on the, the screen if you are getting a signal. Yeah, it's working fine. Okay, all right. Well, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what this, uh, what this means. And I, I didn't realize, my goodness, how many, um, <laughs> how many, uh, uh, questions and things there were down here that I hadn't answered. On Tuesday night, we seem to have, uh, have become more of a social club. Um, th th these are all fantastic, super questions. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, you know, uh, there's no, there's no way I can answer these in 15 minutes, but I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try my best. Um, <laughs> Joseph said, oh, there's supposed to be sound? <laughs> He'd just been reading my lips. Okay, so we answered the glue question, then I went up and got, um, after all, you're just another brick in the wall. Another great comment from Joseph, one of my favorite songs. Uh, Photographer85, and uh, he's also recognizing Curly Toes for the great work he's doing. That's fantastic. Um, let me see. Now, Lance, on these, on, on this upcoming video on the, uh, uh, on the, the, uh, photography competition, when I do the recording during the day, these videos are usually very, uh, respectful of, of people and their pictures. And when they're, when they're bad, I usually don't talk about them. Um, oh, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm not addressing this to you because your pictures were actually good. It's just they were disqualified. But there were some pictures in this competition that were just really bad, but I showed them anyway. And it wasn't because I was feeling mean. It was because I just couldn't stop laughing. And um, yeah, so there may be a, a slight shift towards humor but i'm desperately afraid of scaring anybody off because I, I really i really want people to submit their pictures because they're so good anyway you'll 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 be the judge of that won't you all right uh, curly toe sounds like a dangerous man yes he is a dangerous man he doesn't have hair either which is always a bad sign or a good sign let me see j a welcome oh he's talking to patrick okay um, Zirin definitely works with Lightroom, but you must have the, oh, that's it. Yeah, the prosumer or the professional license. I assume that everybody has that, but that's obviously not the case. Uh, you do need that if you want to access all the fancy brushes and the, the batch processing and that type of thing. Good point. A question from Keith, uh, is increasing ISO an option to work with a lower power of the flashes? Um, oh, to cut down on reflection? Uh, in my opinion, uh, no. 
um, it, it really is a it's a poor alternative to adding more light sources with better diffusion. Let me explain what I mean. If your issue is with having hot spots, the hot spot is telling you something. It's telling you that the light source that you that you are using is too bright in one area, which means you haven't got it far enough back or it, enough diffusion between the light and the subject to spread the photons out to where you don't get that specular highlight. Putting uh, the, the, um, the flash down and then turning the ISO up will add noise without really affecting the problem, which is lack of diffusion of the light. So what I recommend you do is add a second flash halve the power of both of them, spread them out, and add diffusion. If you, the, the way to think about flash is, put yourself in the position of the insect. Don't actually pin yourself. That is dangerous. Just pretend. And look back at the camera and at the lights. Now, Fire the flashes, and I, I actually do this. I will, if I'm having problems, I'll, st I'll put my head down at the end of the table there, and I'll trigger the flashes, and I will see what the flashes look like to the insect. If there is an intense spot of white light where the tube is for the flash, you're going to see specular highlights on your bug. And it means that you need to move the, the diffusion away from the light source and add a second layer close to the subject and then look at it again. When the last layer of diffusion is lighting in a solid wall of light, the size of your diffusion panel, you're done. You'll never get specular highlights. That's the trick. If you can turn a spot of light into a wall of light, your specular highlight problems will go away and you don't ever have to increase the ISO. The, remember that the ISO comes with trade-offs. Yes, you can reduce the noise in Topaz or you can reduce the noise in Lightroom, but when you do that, you are also going to introduce softening of, of the image because all what it's doing to reduce the, the noise is also removing the detail. It's kind of smoothing over detail. So it's a trade-off and you don't want that. Don't artificially amplify the light if you can possibly help it. Who needs bigger shoes? I've, I've missed something again. This I do all the time. I, am, I need to hire a person who can sit with me during these and just hand me bits of paper telling me what questions to answer. Does anybody want that job? Um, I can offer um, nothing uh, at all for pay. Just uh, leave a, a message in the notes and I'll get in touch with you if anybody's interested. Be long hours, no pay. All right. Let me see. I am so lost in here. I still don't get the thing about bigger shoes. Um, so I, I'll move on. And Angie. Uh, on, Angie has only just discovered my live chats. And um, it's, yeah, me too. I mean, I, I only started doing these uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, on a whim, actually, I was my board told me not to do it. That, that I needed to focus on my videos, but I thought that this would I thought that this would fill in a gap that we really, really needed uh, a, a way to a way to dig a bit deeper into the videos because I don't when I'm making a video I don't, I don't know what you're thinking I don't know what you're thinking as you watch it. Oh, why did he go so fast over that? But this is the place for us to deal with that stuff. Great. Let me see. Uh, Somebody's ordered some insects from Insect Trade EU. Rob has. Oh, yeah, so did I, actually, this week. I'm not sure if they're ready for use or will they have to be prepped. No, they will in every case, Rob, have to be prepped. Did you order the 
individual bugs or did you order the scientific lot? If you ordered the scientific lot, it's a real crapshoot. Um, crap being a very appropriate word because some of them are just going to be in astonishingly bad shape. Uh, but you can also get 25 weevils for you know $10 or whatever. So you only need a couple of them to be perfect. And, and usually they are, but they are all going to be scrunched up and some of them are going to be covered in dirt and they all need work, which is great because that this is a fantastic way to learn the skills needed to to get a, a bug. This bug was one of the bugs that arrived in a packet that had been uh, um, attacked by mold. And the entire weevil, the one that I just showed you, which looks immaculate now, was covered in white hyphae. And I had to pick it all off and then wash it and dry it about five times. Then I did its eyes with some decon and uh, dried it and groomed it and photographed it and it turned out to be perfect, but it wasn't perfect to start with. So you just have to be prepared. Having said that, there were plenty, plenty of the bugs that I got from uh, that company that were just about ready to pin and shoot. The bigger they are, the easier it is for them to, to present you with a good insect. Did you order any tiger beetles by any chance? The tiger beetles I got from them were superb. I just loved them, and they were in great shape. Um, talking about keeping insects, um, tiger beetles, one of my favorite things to photograph. If you ever get them, you'll see that their heads fall off. Just guaranteed, if you keep it long enough, its head will fall off. But don't throw it away. I just pin their heads um, with the ball end of the insect pin put a bit of glue on it, stick it up their neck. And from that point, hence, you've got a, um, a, a, a tiger beetle's head that you can photograph its big, uh, horrible looking mandibles with. And yeah, I've got, I, I have it loaded over there on my stage right now. That's another thing. This is the best venue for me to do demonstrations. So I can see that I need, I'm gonna need to, to rethink Thursdays because this is a, an absolute torrent of good questions so I can't I won't be able to, to chatter at all like uh, I did today but if in advance if you if you come over to this video because the videos will be in my uh, uh, channel on my channel you'll see what's coming up you can click on that video and write a comment before the video so if you write a question there, when I come and start up and open it up before the long before the video, uh, the live stream starts, I can see if if you're saying, I don't know how to put a a, a, a Nikon a CFI Plan 10X objective onto my extension tubes, can you show me? Then yes, I can. I'll grab everything and then I'll I will do it. I've got a second camera um, right over yonder that. Uh, uh, I put there for this purpose that's me waving at it <laughs> right there but yeah so I, I've got another camera I can do demonstrations of whatever you want you just have to ask and give me time to set up so I don't know what how we got onto that one um, all right let me see what I haven't forgotten uh, Ralph wants to cover your insects in chocolate and eat them. That's that's disgusting, but have at it. Ugh. You you um, you're gonna find that the the insect uh, trade EU is is my favorite place to buy bugs. It really is. I w if I was an insect collector, I probably wouldn't buy them from there. But I'm not. I'm a photographer, and I I. I would rather have a packet of 20 weevils. I'm gonna, I am gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you some more weevils. I probably shouldn't because of the time thing, but I just absolutely love insect trade EU weevils. So th these are just a couple of examples of weevils that, um, that I have come across out of a scientific lot. 
So this is a cheap and cheerful bucket of, uh, of weevils. Uh, I must have had 30 different species that I'd never heard of before. Look at these things. They're absolutely glorious. And um, yeah, some of them even got captions. There's a, um, there's a, a <laughs> I've got a picture of a fire ant that's uh, eating a fly and his eyes got all uh, wonky from being in uh, the alcohol too long. That's terrifying, that is. If I'd, when I was a kid, that would have kept me up at night. Ah, uh, let me see. It was weevils I was looking for. and I, that, here's, here's another one. I haven't finished him yet, but uh, he was covered in uh, mold as well. Another weevil. These are all from a scientific lot that cost $10. Look at this ugly thing. Yep. Anyway, um, I, and uh, this is the uh, bee I was talking about, the orchid bee. You, if you ever see this many photographs in, um, in my Lightroom, it's because they haven't been stacked yet. Uh, going back to that first question I was asked, isn't this a glorious bee though? It's just the most uh, photogenic um, creature out there. I must have a hundred photographs of it now. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'm just gonna, I, I will sit here and show pictures all day long um, and, and talk about the problems with them and, and uh, you know how they were set up. If you ever want to do that, that would definitely be fine with me. I enjoy doing that. But let me see, uh, back to the questions. Uh, dearie me, I'm just, I'm, I have been led into a false sense of uh, accomplishment from Tuesday night where I could just kind of casually answer as I go along, but uh, I can tell that this is going to be more of a test uh, in, in getting everything answered. I am so happy, I'm thrilled to bits that I'm getting so many interesting questions, just wonderful. Uh, let me see. D did I answer your question, Lee? Have you figured out uh, how to get onto Discord? Are you on there yet? Did you see the thing I put down at the bottom? I hope so. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over um, everything but the orange ones because they're the, the the ones I believe are probably questions. So I answered Ploddles on the 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 issue of. Um, which uh, DCR to use. And Stuart. I'll be damned. Not the Stuart, are you? Well, that would, that would just make my day if you were. Welcome. I'm so glad you came. I'll be. Well, it's nice to meet you. I and mean, it's not a very fair meeting, is it? Um, uh, if, if you are, in fact, a Stuart Wood, let's get in touch. I mean, I'd love to talk to you. I think we have a lot in common. All right. Great. Well, that was fantastic. You didn't like the bell. You're going to get it again. Photographer, 85, hold your chest. That bell is my... Um, <laughs> that, that's uh, how, how I announce a contender in the competition. You'll see. Watch the video. It'll make sense. Um, how often will I be on at this time? Every Thursday till the end of time or the end of me every Thursday every Tuesday at eight o'clock in the evening American Central Time six o'clock on the West Coast seven um, nine o'clock on the East Coast and stupid o'clock in the morning for you Europe and then every Thursday not every other every Thursday I'll be here at two o'clock my time eight o'clock or nine o'clock your time count on it Put it in your diary. Cancel your uh, your plans. Um, leave your girlfriend if that's the only day that she can go out to the pictures. Just tell her sorry, you've got something else going on that's more important. That'll work. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, uh, Joseph needs to. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Don't don't come to the competition, Joseph, if you're competitive, because uh, we we this is fun. The, the competition is, an, is a learning tool and it's fun and the pictures are fantastic and I 
I would love to have you over there, but don't get all competitive on me. Oh, I don't care. You can be competitive. That's fine. Yeah, come on. I'd love to love to see some of your work. I, n I know how good a photographer you are. Your uh, reputation precedes you. Uh, where, how to use Musu black paint uh, with a with a uh, spray gun? With a, I mean, a, um, what do you call it? Um, the thing that that hisses a snake. That's <laughs> no. Um, uh, what do you call airbrush? Airbrush. You need to use an airbrush because it needs to go on molecule layer thin in layers. You need to layer the 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 paint. I'm assuming that it, it goes on much the same as Vanta, uh, Vanta Black. Stuff's really expensive, uh, but if you use an airbrush, it lasts forever. And uh, yeah, what are you using it for? Um, how, uh, where, how to use it? I use it for black backdrops, though um, I'm not using it right now these days. I have a piece of velvet that is almost as black as that. And that's my that's my go to thing right now is is velvet. I like it because it doesn't involve painting anything. All right. Ray guns and robots. That could have been from a musical. I don't know. Whiskers on kittens. That was definitely from uh, one of them Julie Andrews ones that I had PTSD from as a child. Uh, oh, look, there's a message from me. That's the Discord link. Anybody who wants to join Discord who's not there now, you really need to. Go over there, look, snoop around, look at what Curly Toes has done. And if you still think, nah, that's not for me, then don't come back. Nobody will ever bother you. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, you might be missing something um, worthwhile. I know you will be. Uh, Erratic Buddha, evening, evening. That doesn't make any sense to me. I thought Buddhas were very calm, not to mention made of stone. How can that be erratic? I don't know. You'll have to explain. Uh, yep, you can download the Discord app and search for Alan Moore's photography, but I don't know how you then get on. So, um, I mean, I'd, you still need an invitation, I think. Or maybe you can get on and ask for an invitation. I don't know. I'll ask Curly Toes. He's in charge. Okay, Art's given me three thumbs up. I think that's good. Loretta, there is a name I don't recognize. Uh, welcome. Oh, it's your first time here, you say. Well, that's why I didn't recognize it. You aren't by any chance uh, related to Elvis, are you? Probably not. That would be, uh, that would be too uh, much of a coincidence. Uh, Elvis Costello, of course. Um, so I mentioned in a video somewhere about crystallizing vitamin C uh, well, so would I. I'd like to, to know more about it. It wasn't me that did it. Um, the the, the uh, crystallizing vitamin C in uh, alcohol is something that apparently is uh, what Canadians do uh, during the snowy season because the photo competition this month has... Oh, I, love, I, can't, I shouldn't tell you. It'll spoil the surprise. I'll do it anyway. Uh, Gilles uh, from uh, the French part of Canada got snowed in and uh, decided to experiment with uh, vitamin C and uh, vodka. And he created these multicolored psychedelic sombreros. And uh, they're in the photo competition. If you want to know about them, I'll tell you what. Go to Discord. Ask where Gilles is. G-I-L-L-E-S. And say you want to know more about his uh, booze and um, pills. Or is that that'll probably get me in trouble for, uh, for saying that? Ask him about his ethanol and um, uh, ascorbic acid, and he'll tell you. I bet. I'll tell him to look out for you. Okay. Yeah, that's jo Joseph is telling Loretta that I that that I need to be added. Uh, to get my attention, but I'm reading everybody's message because I don't, uh, I'm not good at, at catching all the added ones. John says, if I want to go beyond one to one, say four or five to one, with an objective, can you recommend a relatively inexpensive one? Yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely can. Amscope makes a four times objective that is a finite objective. 
it is $20 still. It was $20 when I bought my first one. And it is an unbelievably good little lens for somebody who, who's just trying to get into the four or five times. But let me tell you an, another way that's, that's only a little bit more expensive is buy an L Nikkor um, 50 millimeter f2.8 a used in larger lens reverse it you only need one adapter stick it on a, a rail and you can get automatically just by a, adjusting your extension whether it's with the bellows or extension tubes anywhere from a little over one to one all the way up to about five to one all it all from one lens and it is sharp 50 bucks a mint condition Nikkor 50 millimeter on eBay yesterday was $50 from Japan with like $6 shipping. So they are available, they are out there. And uh, that is even better than an objective because you can use it as a, a 1X lens, a 2X, 3X, 4X, just by dialing in different lengths. When I do not have a Mitu Toyo infinity corrected objective and uh, ITL 200 set up on my horizontal stage over here. Every other minute of its existence, it has a 50 millimeter EL Nikkor on it because it's just such a good lens. Um, uh, it, it's as good as the Schneider Compenon and uh, the, the uh, well, I've, I've never used an enlarger lens better than the copy I have. And it's got a scratch on the front element. Go figure. All right, so that's that's my best bet for you, John. And if you if you uh, want to get in touch and get the details, I'll tell you tell you uh, where you can get it. So Loretta still wants to more information about the the alcohol and uh, vitamin C. I once again I'm going to refer you to Gilles. Uh, He's, that, that's his thing, apparently. His other photograph was of lace, so you read into that what you will. And uh, good afternoon, Bud. Bud is here. Bud is our resident Photoshop expert, which reminds me, I, when I was sketching out for you the, the future of the channel, one thing I didn't mention was that uh, features like um, the... the uh, 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 the Photoshop thing that we've been doing is probably going to fall right into that same pattern of me doing a short video that deals with some area of, of uh, editing in Photoshop. Because I, while I don't consider myself a Photoshop expert in the traditional sense of the word, I do consider myself a macro photography Photoshop expert because, I mean, there, there's, there aren't that many people doing it. So uh, I can uh, certainly feel comfortable presenting a few topics in a video, but then the meat of that will be when Bud and I do a live stream after the video comes out. And that's going to follow the same pattern of the video comes out, then we have a couple of live streams to discuss it, pick it apart, and answer whatever questions come from it. Okay, good. And there's one other thing I'm going to tell you about, and then I'm probably going to... Oh, it's... I've got to go get my car from the from the doctor. It's um, uh, it, they told me to come get it at three o'clock, so I'll have to run in a minute. But the other thing was the photo competition. I am thinking about changing up the way I do it, and I just I'll I'll do a poll next time. I don't have time to do it today, but be thinking about this because I want you all to submit photographs. I am thinking about involving you guys in the competition in some way and i'm thinking one of three ways number one is i will continue to do the judging but i'll do it live in a live stream now i might do it as a separate live stream than this or it might replace one of these but that's one option is i'll i'll go through the pictures in real time so i won't have looked at them and i will judge them and score them so you can hear what i am looking at and you can see what i'm doing then another option is I'll pre uh, I'll I'll go through the the whole batch of them. Usually I do it twice, and I'll separate out the fifteen to twenty finalists, the ones that the winners are going to come from that group, 
and I could do that ahead of time, and then you guys could vote on the winners. I'll just, we'll just do, we'll do it live. Well, I'll count votes, and I'll show you the pictures. I'll tell you what I think. I'll show you the, the close-ups and everything, and then you give a vote, and, and you vote the winner. That's another way of doing it. Just be thinking about it. I'll, I'll poll this next week and see what the, the, the consensus is. Watch this week's video first because it's a, it's a bit of a departure from my previous videos on this subject because I was so tired. Uh, I think my, um, my, my normal uh, good manners just uh, went by the wayside. But see what you think. You might like it better. Oh my goodness, my voice is getting tired. Um, let me see. Yes, right after I said the 4X Amscope uh, photographer 85 tells John, yep, yeah, that, that's a good one. And it's cheap. If you want a better objective, you're going to have to go with an infinity corrected objective. And I think the best bridge objective out there is the Nikon CFI Plan 10X because you can take your DCR 250 and make that into a, a lens that is as sharp as the Mitutoyo 5X, the 10X with a 250. Seriously. Great, great um, um, savings there. Uh, yeah, Rayon, Raynox, Renox, the, the, they all get spell checked into something different. So there you go. Um, Ingolf loves the Raynox DCR250 for normal macros in combination with a 90 millimeter macro lens. Yes, that I used one in a video of, uh, to, the, to that purpose and, and it, it, it was nice. It was nice. But you know what? I have those Nisi uh, diopters that I reviewed a couple of years ago and I love them. Uh, Look, it, people, people are, uh, uh, I guess, heading off for their dinner. It's late. Oh, Laura G showed up. Hey, Laura, good, good to see you. Everybody has come to this one. I'm so thrilled. Um, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cut it off, right here. Um, at, uh, let me see. It's about a thousand comments from the, from the end. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run through. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a copy of these. And um, uh, I'll uh, run, get my car, and then I'll come back. And if, if you asked a question and I didn't answer it, please check back next time you're on YouTube and just, just look in the, in the, either in the video description or in the comments below, and I'll answer your questions there. Um, I, I won't have time to do it right this second, but as soon as I get back and get that video out, I will. Okay, so I'm sorry that... We ran over, but uh, this was an absolute uh, uh, thrill for me to, to, to see this um, uh, so well, uh, well received. I'm so glad everybody showed up. I was, uh, I was afraid that, you know, because we have the Tuesdays, nobody would come on Thursdays, but it seems to be a, a whole different group. Um, and um, I'm, I'm so glad that we can do this in Europe too. Okay, I am gonna go and uh, get some stuff done and I will see you guys. Patreoners, Saturday morning, 8 a.m., so 2 o'clock in the afternoon, your time if you're in Europe. If you don't belong to Patreon but want to see me stick around, you can join Patreon and it will be most appreciated. Um, and that's uh, all I have for today. So thanks for bearing with the disorganized ramble today, but I think we covered a lot of ground. And I will see you, if not before, next Thursday. Two o'clock in the afternoon, my time. Eight, nine o'clock in the evening, yours. Adios.